Hello everyone, in this video I'm going to show you how to crack on-campus placements and crack any company in on-campus placement. So if you are appearing for on-campus placement, you're in a bit of a luck because it is easier than off-campus placement because the competition is limited to your campus, your college. But nonetheless, you have to put in efforts and work in order to get selected by the top companies. So in this video, I'm going to show you how to crack on-campus placements. Also, this video is a part of my placement preparation playlist which is all about how to crack your dream placement. I'll give a link in the description. It will also appear on the corner card. So do check it out and let's get to the video. So it will be covered in two phases. I'll cover it in two phases. One will be the preparation phase and other one will be the execution. So preparation will be what to prepare, how to prepare, where to prepare. Execution will be basically what to do before the interview. So suppose if you have an interview of XYZ company, then what to do before just that. So preparation and execution, let's get into it. So first thing in preparation is DSA and problem solving, which is the most important and this is where a lot of people lack and this is where a lot of people have trouble in. So before you learn DSA and problem solving, you need to have mastery over one programming language. Okay, so that can be any programming language, but I highly suggest either choose C++ or choose Java. So either learn C++ or learn Java or if you have time, learn both. Okay. And you can also learn C because I've seen a few companies ask MCQ questions on C. That is optional, but absolutely either learn C++ or learn Java and this is the programming language that you will be doing DSA and problem solving in. Okay, as for where to learn, you can learn from W3 schools and all of the resources I'm mentioning will be in the description, don't worry about that. All of these websites resources will be there in the description box. So you can learn the programming language from W3 schools and Java T point. These are two great websites for learning programming language which is C++ and Java. Okay, so once you've learned the basic syntax of either C++ or Java or both, so once you've learned the basic syntax, once you're able to form simple programs in this, then the next thing to do is learn the library. So library of these programming languages will really help you in solving complex problems and in DSA. So C++ has STL, so C++ has STL library, Java has collection. So you need to learn C, uh, STL if you're doing C++, you need to learn collections if you're doing Java. Again, where to learn? So go on YouTube and if you're doing C++, search C++ STL in one video. From the top few search results, just watch one of the video and try hands on what they're doing. So from the top few search results, just watch one of the video and try hands on what they're doing and you'll be able to understand. Likewise for Java collection, just go on YouTube, search Java collection in one video. From the top few search results, just watch one of the videos. Try hands on what they're doing and you'll have a good understanding of Java collection. So learning the library of the programming language is very important, like I said, in order to solve complex problem. I'll also give a link to few videos which are helpful for learning C++ STL and Java collections. Okay, so once you've learned the basic syntax and the library of the programming language, next thing to do is solve DSA, is do DSA and problem solving. Okay, so for learning DSA only, what you need to do is first get a list of the DSA which you're going to learn. So you can find the list on Geeks for Geeks. Geeks for Geeks has a list of data structures and list of algorithms which are important for placement. I'll also again give a link in the description, you can find from there. So you'll have a list something like array, strings, link list, something like that. So what you're going to do is you're going to pick one by one from the list. So suppose you pick link list, then you, for each of that you're going to learn the theory, then you're going to implement it in code, then you're going to solve problems. So suppose you're on link list. So what you do, first you learn the theory of link list, where to learn? You can learn on YouTube. Just search link list working or if you're on binary search tree, just search binary search tree working. There's a ton of videos and you'll be able to learn. So work first, learn that theory from YouTube. Be able to conceptualize and visualize what is happening in the data structure. Okay, once you're clear with the theory of the data structure, next thing to do is implement it in code. Whatever language you're working with, C++ or Java. Okay, so first try to implement yourself. First try to implement the working yourself. If you're not able to implement yourself, you can take hints. So you can take hints from Geeks or Geeks. Geeks or Geeks has the implementation of all data structures and algorithm of the list in C++ and in Java. Okay, so you can take hint from Geeks or Geeks, but don't copy the code. Okay, you can take hint, but write the code yourself, implement it yourself. So once you've learned the theory, then you've implemented it in code. Next thing to do is solve problems. So suppose you were on the list, right? You learn the theory. You implemented link list and code, now you're going to solve problems. For solving problems, two websites are enough. Those websites are again Geeks or Geeks and Lead Code. So Geeks or Geeks is pretty much the holy bible of computer science students, right? 
So geeks for geeks and lead code are enough for solving DSA problems. So what you're going to do, go on lead code, like I said, suppose you were on link list, then search link list problem on lead code and try to do three to four easy problem and three to four medium problem and two to three hard problem. So this is like the minimum that you should do. This is like the minimum criteria. Even like ideally the more you do the better, but at the very least try to do three to four easy, three to four medium and two to three hard problem for each DSA. Then you'll come on Geeks for Geeks. Geeks for Geeks also has problems of each of the DSA in that list. Solve from there also. And make sure you don't solve the same problem. The problems aren't overlapping. Okay. So once you do this for every data structure or every algorithm, you learn the theory from YouTube, you implement the algorithm or the DS encode, then you solve problems. This will be enough for the DSA problems, DSA aspect. And the more problems you solve, the better you will be at DSA. Okay. Now I have problem solving separately from DSA. And the reason for that is the problems in DSA are pretty classic, right? Most of the problems are something like reversal link list, traverse a binary search tree. These are classic problems, but most of the problems asked in coding rounds are not classic. They're pretty new and they don't require DSA, but they require analytical thinking. Okay. So you need to solve those kind of problems and you can find such problems on coding platforms like code forces, code shift, hacker. Oil. So you can choose code forces and code forces has level of problems. Div 2A is the easiest, then div 2B tougher, div 2C tougher, and it goes on like that. So try to solve till div 2C or div 2D. So go on code forces from the problem set, solve problems till div 2C or div 2D. Because that's like the maximum difficulty that usually comes in online coding rounds. Okay? So try to solve 30 to 40 problems from code forces. Again, like I said, the more you solve the better, but try to solve minimum 30 to 40 problems. Now, so this is solving problems. You also need some uh, contest experience because when you're actually appearing for the interview, everything will be in a time duration. Everything will be with a time constraint. So to take experience of that, give contests. Okay. So there's live contests on both code forces and lead code. So you can give code forces div2 contest. So code forces div2 contest and lead code has bi-weekly and weekly contest. So you can give five or six contests on code forces, give five or six contests on lead code. Now, at any point, if you're not able to understand any problem, either on code forces or on lead code, you can either read an editorial. Both of these websites have editorial and you can even watch a video tutorial. A lot of people upload video tutorial for problems of these, for solutions of these problems. Okay. So once you do this for DSA and problem solving, this is pretty much enough. Okay. And this is, like I said, the minimum, the more problems you solve, the better will be your problem solving skills. The better will be your DSA skills. Okay. So once you've done this, the next important thing is to have a project on your resume. Okay. So you need to have a good project on your resume, which shows that you've actually learned some development or you've put in some efforts and your project should be a bit unique. That's what mostly the interviewers are looking for. So you should have a good project on your resume. For making a project, you can choose a lot of technologies. There's Android development, web development, machine learning, blockchain. There's a ton of things. So choose the technology, whatever you like, and you can do two things. If you can spend some money, I highly suggest buy a course on Udemy. That would be the easiest way. So suppose you're taking web development, buy a course on Udemy. They'll have some courses. They'll have some projects in that course. So just take that course, learn it and make the project like the one they have in the course, but make sure your project is unique. Okay. So if you're able to spend some money, it's very cheap. You can buy a Udemy course. Otherwise you can learn from YouTube. Okay. So to mention some resources on YouTube, there's code with Harry who puts out great content. There's Telescope, there's free code camp, there's Amigos code, there's this channels. Again, I'll give them in the description from there. You can learn development. Okay. So the idea is that you should make a project which should be unique and which should show that you've put in some efforts. Either take a Udemy course or learn something from YouTube. Okay. So have a good, nice working project. Now, next thing is CS fundamentals. So this is like the core computer science subjects, like the core theory parts. Okay. And a lot of companies ask questions of this during the technical interview and subjects generally, which are asked are operating system, object oriented programming, computer network, database management system with SQL. Okay. Again, where to learn this geeks or geeks, geeks or geeks has notes of each of these subjects. So for learning these subjects, like I said, again, go on geeks for geeks and make notes. So I have one notebook for OS, one notebook for OP, one notebook for each of these, 
and save your notes there. Write your own notes, either handwritten or digital. Write notes and learn the topics from Geeks or Geeks. Now, again, to mention some more resources, uh, there's Gate Smasher, which is an amazing YouTube channel, and he has playlists on literally all of these. Okay, so Gate Smasher has great videos. You can learn from there also. But again, Geeks or Geeks is the main thing. Learn the topics, make notes for each of these, and then you can revise your notes later during the before the interview. So see its fundamentals, learn all of these subjects from Geeks for Geeks, make notes, and you can also refer Gate Smasher videos. And Love Hopper also has an OS series. I'll give a link to that in the description as well. Okay, so now that you've done CS fundamentals, you've done uh, DSA problem solving, you've made a project. Now, the next thing in the priority list is aptitude. So once you've done all this, once you've done the preparation, once you've learned everything, the next thing is what to do before the interview. So suppose you have interview of XYZ company in the next few days, what to actually do before the interview. So let's get into that. First thing to do is go on Geeks for Geeks archives. So suppose you have Amazon's interview in the upcoming day, go on Geeks for Geeks, look at Amazon's uh, problems. Geeks for Geeks has archives of all companies, like major companies. From there solve problems. Next thing to do is look at Geeks for Geeks interview experience or any interview experience. This is very important. I cannot stress this enough. This is like the most important part of your place and preparation. So whenever you go for a company's interview, before that, try to learn interview experiences of other people. Okay? So I'll give you an example of why interview experience is important. So I was there for IBM's coding test and beforehand I knew from interview experience that IBM asks a lot of SQL questions. So I was well prepared with my SQL so and I was able to crack IBM's coding test. Likewise, if someone is appearing for Cisco's coding test, then they would know that Cisco focuses on computer networks. So they can be well prepared with computer networks. So whatever the company is focusing on in the interview experience, be well prepared with that. Learn from the interview experience of others. Best way is Geeks for Geeks interview experience. They have the archive of, like I said, major companies from there you can learn the interview experience. Now, after solving problems from the archives and learning the interview experience of others, one more thing you can do is give mock interviews. This is again a great way of uh, like knowing your skills. So mock interviews you can give on some websites which allow to give mock interviews for free. I'll again give a link to those websites in the description. Or you can ask your seniors to give mock interviews. You should always have a good relationship with your seniors because they're the ones who have cleared placements before you, right? So ask your seniors to take mock interviews from you or you can use the websites. I'll give a link to them in the description. So that's pretty much it. Just solve problems from Geeks for Geeks archive and interview experience. Very, very important. Learn and try to give mock interviews if you can. It's not that important. It's pretty much optional. Now, after doing all of this, one more thing is there and that you should be confident in the interview. This goes without saying, obviously. Still, I know a lot of people who know everything, but just because they're not confident enough, they're not able to crack companies. Be confident. Be able to articulate your thoughts in front of the interviewer. Be confident with all of your preparation and then you'll be able to crack any company, it's my guarantee. Because on-campus placements are not that difficult while compared to off-campus placements, okay? I'll make one more video about off-campus placements. This was specifically tailored to on-campus. So that's it. Just give enough time and dedication to the preparation. Follow this for the execution. Follow this before the interview and be confident in the interview and that's pretty much all you need. If you have any doubts, just leave in the comments. I'll be very glad to answer. Thank you.